and hope you are enjoying the season so far because I know I am. I just got back. Uh, I love night rides when you got no wind. Woo, I was flying. <laughs> anyway, the controller is here. Now, here's the situation. The motor on the back of my bike, uh, I've got to keep the amps and the volts down, obviously, because um, or the amps and the wattage down because I'm running two controllers or two hub motors on one battery pack. So the back one was only 500 watt at um, 32 amp. So I figured I'd pick this one up because it was advertised as 1,000 watt at 32 amp, which I thought was a little weird. Not as weird as when it actually got here and I had a look at it. <laughs> anyway, this is the way it was packed, basically thrown in the box and uh, shredded it all the way here. I actually took it out and straightened out the fins. Obviously, they were bent out of shape. And here it is. No instructions or anything. Just, you know, the plugs were plugged in. Luckily, they didn't do damage or snap off. Um, here's where it gets really weird. So I get it here, and I'm looking at it. And it says uh, 42 volt to 79 or 82 volt, whatever. And then it says... 1500 watt and it says for the amps 50.1 amp <laughs> I'm sorry but this is an actual true 1500 watt there's a reason why it's long because the board is huge and there's a lot of fets in here unless they found a way to make the fets like if they're maybe surface melt and they're mounted this way face down uh, and they would line them up this way and then line them up down going down this way this is why I one of the reasons why I picked this up, because we're going to take it apart. I actually wanted to prove that it was actual 500 watt uh, being sold as a 1,000. I was going to use it anyway, because I needed one for the back of the bike. Anything more powerful than what I got on there. It's a sine wave controller, so I don't know because of that, uh, the way it's set up and the way it's built, that uh, it uses less FETs. I have no idea. I usually go by the count of the FETs that are inside. So I think uh, we will set you up with a tripod, and we'll uh, take this apart even before we do anything. Oh, there's another thing. The reason I am taking it apart and looking at it first as well, this is something I hate. This has only happened to me once since I started e-biking way back in 2001. Um, it was a little after that that this happened, but uh, I ended up purchasing an expensive controller from a company I'm not going to name. And it showed up at my door with a mud slick all the way down the side of it. So you know it was actually mounted on someone's bloody bike. They didn't like it and returned it. And the guy sold it to me. Didn't even clean it off. Anyway, that one, out, that one turned out being a hunk of junk. Um, they told me because I didn't use their, their type of battery that uh, I managed to blow it up. It just died for no reason at all. This one, I don't know. I got... Uh, I, I honestly, it just looks like it, it to me. It looks like it's mislabeled. I don't even think it was a thousand watt. I think this is a 500 watt at 32 amp. I mean, you could see on the back the mold, how it turns in right here. So it means those are lipped there. That's the side where the fets are on. And it doesn't even look like both sides are even occupied. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> you got me. We'll find out. Let's take this thing apart and. Uh, Count the fets. Yeah, so I much I would I would wanted to test this first before I actually took it apart, but given that uh, what I found on it, um, I want to make sure it wasn't blowing up before it came to me, and then I ended up blowing something up, plugging it into it. But as you can see, there's a scratch there, and there is a scratch there. So uh, I don't know. Maybe the guy that was sold it to me was had one on a bike and he didn't want to disappoint, so he took it off the bike and threw it in a package and sent it to Amazon. I, don't, I couldn't tell you. To me, it could be someone bought it, installed it, and blew it up, sent it back, and then I got it. Yeah, it could be that too. That's why we're opening it up. That way I'm not like, oh, I just damaged my battery and my BMS because I didn't use a fuse. Besides, I want to see what it's uh, set up. What they did to make it thinner this way. Let's 
seals are like. Uh, it's like foam. Yeah, I guess I can stop some. Whoa, check that out. Yeah, I can tell you there's no way this is, is this is well, I mean, it could be. I'm not going to comment yet. i got to get this thing apart. Oof. Let's take the other side off. The bets are really close together. From what I can see, they're really densely packed, so who knows how many are in there. It scares me. This is the way this thing is put together. <laughs> now do I have to slide the top off or do I have to snap it open? Mm. Let me have a good look at this thing and uh, see how far we can get. I'm not gonna lie guys, this I've actually had a really good look at this and looked at it with my uh, my loop. This is a really nice design. Uh, most controllers don't do this, like this gap at the bottom of the board. They actually put a piece of plastic down the middle to support the board, which nobody does that. Um, these hooks here, this, this snaps on, and there's a rubber seal that goes all the way around the top to seal it off. So it actually is pretty sealed. They just basically shrunk it down this way. Um, I'm still trying to figure out how... Uh, I think there's a clip in there. Yeah. I don't know how well that's going to slide out. I've run into this before. It's, it's sort of barbed. So when they push it in, it locks onto the fets. The problem is it doesn't just pull out. Um, the last one I had like that, it, it self-destructed when it pulled it out. Which will be bad. There's no way to mount those fets either way. So, And you can look at that. It's even got a copper bus bars. Carry the load. That's good. It's going to need it. <laughs> okay, so I'm finding a better way to get a look at it without um, taking that pin out because it's obviously it's going to take the pressure off of the fats and probably mangle it in the process. Uh, basically, it's just got clips on each side that just clips onto the heat sink. So if you're going to pry it, pry it from the side that's opposite of the uh, connectors because the connectors are fed through the plastic and the pins. And you don't want to be turning it this way with the pins will literally bend them. You start from this side here and then you can get it apart, hopefully. Like, uh, I was in the process, I got a little bit of uh, controller blood on me. But if you're lucky, you can get this thing back together. <laughs> off. There's the seal for the one side. And there's the seal for the other side. That's all that is. At least it has a seal, it's just not plastic against uh, aluminum. Check out the uh, traces in that. Well, I don't... I'm surprised this is actually a 72 volt. Wow. Well, at least they beefed it up with the traces. That's nice copper work. Nice P2P. This is the, the uh, new thing I do not like in controllers because it's pressed in there. It makes it very hard to work with your uh, electronics when they do that. I mean, I'd love to take this out and flip it over. I'm dying to see the bottom, but we'll get, at least we get the count. So we got uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. What? No. Can't see. Well, in a nutshell, it's still 500 watt. It's a 12 fit. This is a 12 fit. Back in 2006, an old one. It's a 500 watt, and you can tell just by looking at the shunts on the side that there's no way that this is a 50 amp, uh, even if it is a sine wave. Um, maybe it will sound better and run smoother. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'll probably do in this video, 
is this I'm going to sort of drag these two together and uh, put a little bit of solder on it just so it pulls some more amps. Um, if I'm going to be stuck at 500 watt, I want to at least have more pull. <laughs> Makes for more fun. Plus, I don't know what the top speed will be like on this at uh, 70, 79 volts. But uh, I do like the design, though. I do look. I think they look so cool. All that copper in there. You can see that. It's pretty cool. Reminds me of the old audio. Uh, Yamaha used to do that with their amps. And I used to do that with some of the amps I used to build. So it's cool though. Anyway, we're going to throw this back together and uh, do a part two of this, this controller and we'll uh, do some tests on it. I'm actually going to test it with... We'll test it with this one here. And we'll do a before and after a mod to shunt without blowing it up and see if it's got more kick or if there's anything we can do to make it more powerful because I can tell you it's just a standard controller uh, yeah so anyway see you in part two later guys